Uh, this is uh, Jack Yixuan from Microsoft Research Asia. So today I'm going to talk about uh, walkie Maki. So it's an efficient indoor password mapping system. So this is a joint work with my uh, interns, Zhuo Chen and uh, Pei Chao Zhang, and other colleagues, Thomas uh, Prada and uh, Yong Guang Zhang. Um, I think you know, previous speaker has uh, motivated the importance of the uh, location. Indeed, uh, there is uh, ever increasingly interest in location-based services for both uh, industry and other academia. Um, many research works has uh, focused on uh, how to improve the location uh, accuracy, and uh, primarily focused on the location inference algorithms. And uh, they actually you know, has largely neglected the important uh, enabler, which is the maps. I remember uh, just now, uh, 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 you know, a, a, a colleague asked about the question, so how do we know the positions of access points? So, um, okay, so regularly we can see some uh, sentences like this. So we assume certain uh, maps is available, can be established offline, in advance, et cetera. So actually this, such assumptions is not easy to fulfill in practice. It depends on the uh, actual mechanism of localization, so there are different type of maps. And uh, in this work, we are pr particularly interested in building the um, uh, password maps. Because, you know, for indoor environments, the user moves along the pathways. And uh, more importantly, the point of interest are all connected via pathways. So that's why we um, focus on the password mapping. Um, the problem we want, well, I want to solve is, so how can we build uh, internal password maps for millions of uh, buildings? For example, all the shopping malls in Microsoft in United States. So uh, we are with Microsoft, so we are actually thinking in the shoes of uh, a big uh, service, internet service provider such as Bing. So we want to you know, have the, um, such maps for many, many uh, buildings. Given this question, actually the easier solution can be, so can we just ask a specialist to do the on-site survey? But this obviously is expensive and it does not scale. And also, maybe we can just directly ask for uh, floor plans from different uh, you know, building owners. That's uh, uh, impractical either. So um, our idea is trying to you know, uh, construct this uh, password maps through user tracking and also through crowdsourcing to, uh, for the scalability. Uh, think about this, there are many users working in the indoor environments, so um, actually their trajectory always consists of uh, portions of the pathways. So if we are able to aggregate enough user trajectories, so we should be able to infer the uh, overall password map out. And um, uh, this is actually backed up by recent ad advances in um, inertia tracking. Uh, with the uh, IMU sensors. Here IMU stands for the accelerometer, the gyroscope, and the compass. Actually, it's all equipped with uh, modern mobile phones. So we want to build a crowdsourcing system to automatically construct the uh, password maps through ordinary uh, users. Actually, uh, there are several challenges. The first one is, uh, you know, the IMU sensors can track the user, but uh, it is only uh, performs good at the initially. It will drift uh, over the time. So actually we can see this uh, from the, uh, the figure there. So initially it's, uh, it looks like a, uh, along the exact pathways, but uh, after a while it will drift uh, seriously. And uh, perhaps the more important uh, or more critical uh, uh, challenge is actually we want to fuse the data from multiple users because anyway, a single user can work only a, a small portion of the, uh, the overall uh, internal building. So how can we, you know, fuse data from different users? Uh, you know, a, a, a user can start and stop anywhere, and also they, you know, can work uh, quite differently. So uh, also as a crowdsourcing systems, we should not uh, change the um, users' normal behavior, right? They should use the phone as is, as their normal uh, uh, usage. So, um, so to fuse the data from different users, okay, one, um, one, idea is to try to find the common things among uh, data set from different users. So we, uh, here actually our idea is trying to find some landmarks. This is uh, motivated from our real life experience. Right? So when we ask for directions, people always giving uh, directions with uh, reference to some uh, landmarks. Landmarks are, it's, uh, themselves are actually easily to identify and also very stable at a known location. The, the particular uh, merit of landmark is uh, it can stop error propagation. So when you reach a landmark, no matter how 
you have told that all those errors in the direction or in the distance are actually all gone once you uh, reach a uh, landmark. So, so we want to use the landmark. But the subtlety here is actually we need to the landmark to be perceived by the phone, not by the user. Uh, recall that we don't want to uh, change the, the way the user uh, uses the phone. So the, visu uh, the visual landmarks, okay, which is uh, easy for the uh, for user, right? Because uh, I will have uh, our advanced uh, you know vision system. Actually, it's not uh, quite possible for the uh, for the phone because most of the time we are uh, putting the phone in our pockets. So, given the rich set of sensors, existing sensors on the mobile phone, so how can we uh, find uh, you know other uh, uh, landmarks? So then we. Uh, uh, put our attention on the Wi-Fi infrastructure because, you know, uh, for its uh, wide deployment. So we, we're thinking, well, can we use the uh, access points as a, um, as a landmark? Well, it, it, it's a, the access point is, even though it's at, at, at a fixed position, but it's, the coverage is overly large, especially for our purpose to, to really to build, uh, you know, very fine-grained internal um, password maps. So how about using Wi-Fi fi uh, fingerprints? Because uh, many Wi-Fi-based uh, research work already proved that the Wi-Fi fingerprints can better associate the location and the signal. But actually, it's, uh, again, it's turned out to be very difficult because of the, uh, the signal fluctuation and the multi-pass uh, uh, effect. And also, um, it's very difficult to handle the device diversity because different devices, even at the exact same location for the same access points, the, the readings will be quite different. So here comes, comes our uh, key idea. So instead of looking for the access points, we look for its uh, so called shadows on the pathways. So this uh, um, figure shows the uh, illustration, okay, there is a, a layout of the pathways and also um, a deployment of access um, points. Now, suppose a user carrying the phone was, uh, was moving uh, along one of the pathways. So because of the distance between the, the user and the access points, uh, ch changes become closer first and then become the further away. So we will see uh, the trend of RSS will first increase and then decrease. This is governed by the law of radio propagation. So our idea is actually, you know, we will treat this, the location that, corresponding, that corresponds to the, the tipping point of the RSS trend as a Wi-Fi defined lemma. Okay. Given the, uh, this uh, the relative layout uh, of the access point and the other pathways, actually we have you know, multiple opportunities to, uh, to uh, watch the, uh, to uh, identify this uh, Wi-Fi landmarks. So uh, that uh, you know, gives us some you know, hope. Then we did some uh, measurement study to verify if it can be served as a landmark. So this fig uh, the figure shows uh, the RSS plot, which is a filtered um, ISS plot um, for, for a, short, a short walk. So we walked uh, straight along a corridor and then using two different devices at a different time of day. And uh, so we can see, observe something here. First of all, okay, okay, the, the peak, this uh, actually is all highly clustered at the, almost the exact same location at a different uh, uh, um, time of the day on uh, also different devices. And also, so we are detecting using, using the trend, so which is obvious. Um, and make it uh, easily discoverable by the phone, by the device itself. And also, when, if we look at the, uh, the two set of curves, we see that so the, the two devices actually has quite a different, of, um, different gain, a receiver gain, so it, uh, by almost uh, 10 dBm here. So, but uh, we rely on the trend, therefore there is no, um, uh, therefore the detection results of the landmarks are all the same. So all this actually uh, shows the Feasibility of the uh, Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi mark, and uh, we, we just we, we mentioned okay, there are multiple possibilities of the uh, uh, of Wi-Fi marks. Here we show the example here. And now, this, given this layout of the of the, uh, of the pathways, now we let's focus on the access po point AP1 here. So, depends on how the user walks, we are able to find many many opportunities uh, of these uh, uh, landmarks here. Okay, so actually, you know, for, for this one, actually, sometimes, it, for all these, actually, are valid ones, but it's uh, difficult uh, to really different, uh, distinguish them. And uh, we, we said uh, for the uh, landmark, it has to be, you know, uniquely identifiable. 
And then, actually, in some cases, if the user walks first uh, towards the access point, then the turn around, actually, they will make some uh, false cases. So we need uh, some way to identify those. So our solution is, uh, okay, is uh, we basically we're trying to identify a uh, Wi-Fi mark using a uh, three-element tuple. So first of all, is, is, is uh, SSID of the primary um, of the master access points. And also we consider, okay, how the, 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 way, the way how the user walked, okay, the, using the orientation information, which can be uh, obtained from the uh, uh, IMU sensors. And also we consider the neighboring access points. This is mainly to uh, differentiate, um, differentiate uh, uh, Wi-Fi marks on parallel corridors. Okay, of course, uh, when, uh, in practice, actually, you know, because of the sensor errors, and uh, also, you know, that, that it takes time for the uh, device to, to sense the, uh, the Wi-Fi environment, and uh, actually, we, we will see some, you know, variations in practice. But, okay, all, given all these, you know, uh, variations, actually, we, uh, uh, we, our ex experimental results confirm that actually it's very stable for those access points, uh, for those uh, Wi-Fi marks, and also, uh, it's uh, very consistent among different, uh, you know, uh, experiments. So I hope I convinced you, okay, the Wi-Fi masks are easily detectable and are highly stable and consistent. We can achieve, uh, let's say, 90% uh, percentile accuracy or stability within uh, two meters. Now, so we want to build, uh, um, we want to build the password maps from this, uh, uh, user contributor traces. Suppose the user, you know, recorded their, recorded all the uh, Wi-Fi marks it encounters, and uh, also the trajectory information between those uh, Wi-Fi marks. And then, okay, okay, using the um, using the Wi-Fi marks as a common reference point between different users, so we are able to fuse the <coughs> trajectories from different users together. Okay, now. We want to ask another question. So, how should we, you know, place this uh, Wi-Fi marks? So, this is actually is a, is a classical uh, um, graph embedding uh, problem. So, um, we uh, there are some previous work uh, uh, there, and we designed a, a new, um, a more efficient algorithm we call Atoria uh, by using additional information. In our case, actually, it's walking directions. So, uh, the idea is very simple. It's based on um, spring relaxation. So. Basically, we treat, uh, we treat each node, each Wi-Fi mark here as, as a node, and then for any trajectory that uh, uh, connects uh, two Wi-Fi marks, we call it a measurement, okay. For this uh, measurement, we will add, a, uh, add an edge to those uh, uh, corresponding Wi-Fi marks, and then, okay, we incorporate all the user data into, uh, and make it a graph. Now, so our goal is actually is, is trying to find, okay, the or to assign the locations, coordinates of, to this, of all these uh, Wi-Fi marks so that uh, it will best, uh, um, best uh, um, abide by the um, measurement of, of all the traces. So, the, so this is uh, um, um, achieved through uh, iterations, right? Because basically we treat it as a spring network. So if we squeeze the, 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 whole, net, uh, the whole graph into, a, 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 let's say, a, the same locations, then we let go the, the, the whole and um, the other springs, it will naturally you know, converge to a, a minimum energy state. So um, here actually, you know, we have been, uh, we, the difference, as I said, uh, the difference between this algorithm and the previous ones is uh, we are using the, uh, using the direction information. Therefore, we are using the displacement between the Wi-Fi marks, not as a distance. Okay, why we cannot use the distance? Because let's say, uh, give this a very simple example here. Now we have two uh, Wi-Fi marks, one, uh, one and two. If the user walked this way, and then the distance will be two, because uh, we are relying on IMU tracking to really to count how many steps you walked. But if the user walked uh, the other way, actually the, the distance will be six. So this will actually, you know, inconsistent uh, observation will make the graph less, uh, less uh, localizable. Uh, that's why we use, if we use a displacement, actually, you know, we have a c consistent uh, observations there. And also, using, using displacement as it leads to more effective uh, updates in each iteration. Because now, the, as we said, the moving um, direction of each node position uh, in, each, uh, in, in, the, in the middle uh, iterations, actually, is, uh, net, is determined by the net force of all the 
uh, how the neighbors you know stretch the uh, for stretch the uh, particular node. Now we have the inf direction information. Actually, you know all this um, moving directions will be more consistent, uh, more coherent. So we perform the, uh, the the algorithm with uh, other you know like uh, Vivaldi or like a, uh, anchor free localization. These are actually representative work on uh, graph embedding. So we can see, obviously, you know, we can achieve much better uh, uh, improve, much better results in much less iterations. And uh, okay, all this more con more detailed results. So all this actually confirms we uh, confirms that Atoria actually has uh, faster speed and also you know better accuracy. So. So. so I, I hope I convince you. So we Atoria actually can also you know uh, eff effectively locate the Wi-Fi marks. Now, all this actually are based on simulations. Now we want to ask to, to ask. So what's the real system performance? So we did a lot of evaluations. Uh, this is uh, the how we implemented this. I'm going to skip this. So this is just the vi uh, visual result. Um, basically, we uh, worked in our office floor uh, with the, the shape. The ground truth shape is uh, is shown in the, as the blue um, blue lines in the top left, a uh, bottom left uh, uh, figure. So you can see after t about 20 minutes uh, walk. So we are able to, uh, you know, uh, fit, we are able to form a, uh, a course, you know, uh, map, password maps. And then uh, if we accumulate more and more data, actually we will see the uh, inferred password maps, you know, keep on improving. So after 15 minutes of work, so um, it's, it's really, you know, uh, very close to the, uh, the ground truth one. Uh, by the way, for this, actually, you know, we have, um, for this 100 uh, minute walk, actually we asked you know, seven students uh, to, uh, to work the, uh, all the data. So it indeed con con uh, consists of data from different users. And uh, we also you know, walked to a nearby shopping mall to, really to, uh, to do the uh, uh, mall test, and uh, we don't have the map there. So that's why we, we, we take a photo from the flyer, as you can see the, uh, the rightmost uh, figure. And then we marked the way how we walked, and then uh, we're using our method to really uh, infer the password map. If, uh, if you look at the, um, the right uh, button one, the, uh, that figure, the C, okay. So it actually is very close to, uh, to the ground choice, is, which is D. Um, also, we uh, done lots of uh, experiments to quantify the, the, uh, our system. And uh, we, we defined some metrics called uh, like a, a, a node uh, uh, dis discre discrepancy and a shape discrepancy. Basically here, the node uh, we are, actually we are uh, referring to the singular uh, locations, for example, the, the, tur the turning points or the crosses, and also the shape discrepancy means how um, the actual connecting, connecting passes between, uh, between uh, the neighboring nodes. So the, ac the accuracy actually are really good. So for 90% uh, of the time, actually we are, uh, um, achieve less than two meters accuracy. And the maximum is, uh, uh, maximum discrepancy is uh, uh, below three meters. And our system can you know, quickly adapt to, quickly converge, um, maybe uh, usually after five to six visits per, per segment. And uh, also we, you know, we, uh, we apply our algorithm to the, lo to the real uh, localization. And now we can achieve, let's say, for uh, 50 and 90 percent accuracy is about uh, 1.7 and uh, 2.9 meters. And uh, if we compare that to, uh, with the radar, which is, uh, in this case, is about 2.3 meters and uh, 5.2 meters. So our actually are better than uh, radar. Okay, so as a conclusion, so um, we propose a very effective way to leverage the Wi-Fi uh, infrastructure, you know, to, um, con to construct the uh, password maps in a crowdsourcing uh, way. So here I want to explain so why it's called a uh, walkie-markie. So it's basically, that means the user walks and uh, the device will marks. So in the future, actually, we will hope to uh, incorporate other you know, type of uh, location marks like uh, uh, stairs, like an elevator or like lift, because this uh, actually can be perceived by the phone as well. Okay, I have 10 seconds. So this is the most important message is like this. So actually, we are hiring and uh, for interns and also FGs, so if you are interested, please connect me. Thank you. Uh, 
So this is totally neat, just the idea of using these gradients of Wi-Fi uh, signal strength. But it also makes me a little, a little scared, right? Because it's not that Wi-Fi signal strength is really stable over time, or even that, I mean, you showed some nice graphs of being stable over space, but we've all had the experience of you take a step forward, it's better, you take a step back, it's worse. And so, can you imagine, in are there more complex environments where the Wi-Fi signal strength over, say, a path is not going to be these nice, simple curves? You'll have many, many marking points, and that could be confusing the algorithm. Uh, okay, I think the question is really about, you know, for some um, part of the uh, indoor environments, the Wi-Fi, you know, the, the fingerprint, uh, the uh, RSS of the Wi-Fi bin may not be that stable. As we put. Okay. So I think I, I agree with you, yes. In some uh, part of the environment, actually, it's not uh, that stable. The, the good thing is uh, for uh, this system to work, actually, we don't need to find a, you know, uh, a Wi-Fi mark everywhere. Okay. So as long as okay, there are some Wi-Fi marks okay, in this, uh, in this uh, in a internal, in a indoor environment, so we are able to do that. Okay, maybe a related uh, uh, comment is like this, right? So it's not uh, required to every time the user will, will, will sense the same set of, of Wi-Fi uh, wi marks. Because uh, we have you know, proved that if there is a, a Wi-Fi mark, as long as you can, the user can detect that, it's, it's going to be stick to that particular location. So, it's, uh, so it doesn't matter. You don't have to uh, every time to observe that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Hey, uh, Steve Tarzio from VaporStream. Um, good work. Uh, can you talk more about how you deal with uh, cases when the user is not just walking in a certain path? I think that in the experiments, the users are just walking kind of continuously, uh, at probably a constant rate, and you do step detection to figure out their, their, their um, speed. But you know, if a user decides to go and you know, turn around, I mean, you talked about turning around, but um, random walks, uh, how does that change the problem? Uh, okay. So. Uh <coughs> Uh, I think, uh, actually, this is a good question, right? So for our systems, uh, if you read our paper, so even though, yes, we ask the student to work you know, continuously, you know, but uh, we, when we do the evaluation, of, we really chop the, uh, the, the working traces into a, a one-minute segment because we, we, we're trying to emulate how the user uh, actually works. So basically, we just a random chop okay, into, into one-minute segment, and then we are we're trying to infer the, the actual password map from those uh, Randomly selected, you know, one minute segments. Um, I agree. So it's uh, when because we're doing experiment, so we, we have to be really it's more careful, you know, working than the uh, ordinary users. Yeah, but I think uh, again, I, so I really you know, believe in the, the the power of the crowd uh, of the crowdsourcing. Right? If, as long as we can get enough data from different users, those errors individual of in, those errors will actually is going to be cancelled out. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sartre Grover from George Tech. Um, so, uh, I was wondering how many real system implementations you tried, like you've talked about one in your office and one uh, nearby mall, right? Uh, but sometimes, I mean, uh, buildings are not designed the same and materials you use in the building might, you know, impact your measurements and stuff. And if at the nearest location of a user with the AP where you're supposed to have a peak, there's a tower or something in the middle or a metallic body, it, it suddenly spoils the system. So like. Is I think that's one of the problems with like indoor location systems that a solution cannot be generic across all types of buildings. So like, how have you handled that? Like, uh, if if we, if you employ this in a hospital where there are so many metallic objects or something, like, will it still work? <laughs> yes, I, I think the question is is uh, somehow related to a first question, right? So in our uh, situations, so we really emphasize more on the stability of the environment, right? So as long as you didn't change the relative layout uh, of your uh, of your uh, corridors and also where you deploy the access points, so it's, it's okay. Even though, let's say, for example, you, you are mentioning some transient, uh, transient uh, phenomena. For example, I was sitting here. Now there are some, you know, uh, move, move, uh, moving objects pass by. Yes, that will affect my uh, um, measurement. But that will, will not cause any uh, severe problem, right? Because we just missed this, this uh, this landmark. For example, if, you, if we are doing a local, a localization, so it's okay to miss this one. I can still use the previous one, right? Because as if you can, uh, I hope you have seen from our paper, actually, there are, turns out that there are so many, dip, so many, a uh, large number of uh, Wi-Fi marks we can um, identify in practice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.